Let's all get a song book stand and turn to page 311. Page 311. <laughs> What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Everybody that's glad you're here, say amen. 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 It is good to be in God's house today. Thank the Lord for the privilege to be here this morning. And as we pray today, let's just thank him for all that he has done for us in these days. And we appreciate you being here this morning at the Victory Baptist Church, welcoming those that are listening by way of radio. And those that are watching by way of Facebook, thank you for tuning in uh, this morning to our service. And we certainly appreciate you, amen, uh, being here this morning. And I want to say thank you first and foremost to everyone that prayed this past week. And as we took the teenagers to uh, Pigeon Forge to the Arise Youth Conference, uh, we had a great time, amen. We had a great time. Services were wonderful, every service. God met with us every service, uh, 3,500 people, 3,000 teenagers. Um, I tell you, it was good, and we thank the Lord uh, for what he'd done, amen, and uh, thank you for the lives that were changed. I know on Thursday night, I think there was 107 teenagers that got saved, and there was a few that, men that answered their call to preach, and, and so a lot of things God did, and that was just on Thursday night, not counting Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. And uh, our kids were in church about eight hours a day, uh, counting the sessions in the morning, the morning service, and then back at night for choir practice and then the service. And we didn't get out of church, I don't think, nary night until about 10 o'clock was the earliest we got out, amen. But we had a good time. And, uh, of course, yesterday I was a dragon, Amen. Uh, but I'm thankful to be here this morning. And as we pray, let's pray uh, for the service. Let's remember uh, those that are lost today especially. Uh, also pray for our troops and our missionaries. Also continue to pray for Lisa Perkinson, Jackson Pegram, Angie Whitley, uh, Kenley Edwards, Frank Jernigan, Patsy McDonald, Stephanie Stafford, Judah Wolf, Alton Hanford, Sue Setliff, uh, Kim Pulley, Tony Bobbitt, Spring Robertson, Ellen Thompson, 
James and Beulah Edwards, good to see Brother James here this morning. Also, Brother Jim Jones, uh, Joe Dickerson, good to see him back. Had some uh, more cancer surgery on his uh, face and thankful that he's doing well. Glad to see him back. Remember Brother Combs? Brother Combs uh, had, a, I guess, a slight heart attack the other day, and uh, they're going to go back in there. He's got two arteries that uh, is going to have to have some stents or some work done. And so let's pray for him. They'll be able to get that done soon and that God will meet the need there. And also remember Wanda Donovan this in the morning. She goes for surgery on her back, extensive back surgery. Let's remember her in prayer. Brian Boyd, Donald Talbot, Evan and Janice Mitchell, Melissa Woodard, uh, Clyde Miller, Robert Tamika Myers, H.G. Davis, Nancy Askew, Buddy and Teresa Barber, Valerie Hendrick, Pat England, also, remember the, uh, the Dominic family, uh, Junior's aunt, passed away uh, yesterday. And so let's remember the family there, that God will meet that need. Amen. And comfort their hearts. Also, Mary Lou Duncan, Ruth Edwards, Tammy Martin, Violet Stanton, Michael Jolly, Wesley Morris, Chelsea House, Joe Owen. Also, remember the family. There's a family that lives right across the road, uh, their 15-year-old son, uh, was killed uh, this week. Uh, of course, you probably heard about it uh, in a uh, dirt bike uh, accident. And uh, so remember that family in prayer, amen, that God will comfort hearts. Also remember the, the ones that were involved in that, that, uh, that, that God would help them as well, amen. And uh, so just uh, pray for that family. Also continue to pray for Judy and Sam Pendergrass, uh, Bob Thompson, Pat Matthews, and John Matthews. Pray for the choir this morning as they sing, and then pray uh, for the young people as they come to sing in a little while. And I want to uh, ask that the children's church wait till after uh, the youth choir. No, they're not, they're not gonna oh, not going to have it this morning. Okay, just forget what I'm just saying. <laughs> just block that out and move on. Amen. So all the young people going to stay out here this morning. Everybody will stay out here this morning, and uh, looking forward to that. So thank God for His goodness, His mercy, and His grace. Thank you for the privilege to be here today and just being so good to us. Amen. And so let's pray and just believe God. Pray for revival. I tell you, our country needs revival. Our land needs the help of God. And I need God. I need the help of God. And I want God to stir in my heart. I tell you, it's been so good this week. And I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing. Thankful for what he's doing in the hearts of these young people. We need to pray for all of our young people, amen, teenagers, the children, that God will help them. Uh, they hear more than we think they hear. They understand more than what we think they understand. And so let's pray that God will stir in their hearts, amen, and God will meet the needs. So let's bow for prayer today, and let's just thank him. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Brother Wayne talking about he was excited. I'm excited. And uh, so let's bow and ask God to have his will and his way here in the service this morning. Brother Mike Hazel, if you will come pray for us this morning. And while Brother Mike's coming, the, the Sunday school class, he mentioned uh, last week uh, they're um, needing Bibles in Grenada. Is that right? Yes. It's Grenada. And they can print Bibles uh, for them for $5 per Bible. I know he said he got uh, $260 already given. And I said, well, at least hopefully we can pay for 100 Bibles, which would be $500. And so if you'd like to help out, with that, uh, for in the next couple of weeks, it's going to take about two weeks to get that done. And if we can get a, at least 100, purchase 100 Bibles uh, from our church, from our Sunday school or our church. And so if you can do that, see Brother Mike and uh, $5 a Bible. If you want to buy one Bible, two Bibles, three Bibles, 10 Bibles. I'll probably get, we could probably, me and Debbie are going to do 10 Bibles. So uh, that'll be 50 bucks. So. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get this. Maybe we, If we do more than 100, that's fine too. But anyhow, uh, we want to at least buy 100 Bibles. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, he's got to raise $400,000 before it's all said and done to get 80,000 Bibles. And uh, it's a tremendous need. Uh, I, like I told you last week, I've got five sitting on the side of my, beside my bed, and they don't have one. And uh, I just thank the Lord for the burden and the church picking it up and uh, just continue to pray and uh, they need 240,000 before they'll start printing and uh, hopefully we can reach that goal and get the Bibles at least started and they can have them hopefully by Christmas or New Year's and uh, that's the plan. 
uh, Lord willing, and I believe God, I believe God's going to do it. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we do love you. God, you're so good to us, and Lord, you're better to us than what we deserve, and God, I just thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. I thank you, Lord, for uh, this week, Lord, for what you accomplished with the young people. God, it's worth every dollar for every soul that got saved, Lord. It's, uh, God, it's a blessing. And God, I just pray this morning that you just bless here, Lord. Have your will and way in each and every one of these prayer requests. And God, supply the need as only you can. Uh, Lord, bless now in the singing. Bless our preachers. He comes. Lord, anoint him and use him this morning, God, in a mighty way. God, just pour your spirit out upon him. And God, touch that soul that's nearest hell this morning, God, and save that soul and bring them in. And God, we'll thank you and praise you for everything you do for us, Lord. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray and ask it. Amen.
of a sainted old mother who lived out her life here on earth as she lay on her deathbed her friends gathered round her and these were the last words she said oh, But she still had a smile on her face. Yeah. Yes. She said, I hear yeah. singing, oh, they're waiting yeah. for me. Yeah. And then yeah. she looked up to heaven and said, Oh, look what I pray for a mansion. so feeble and her voice was so low but she still had a smile on her face yep. Yep. she said I hear singing oh they're waiting for yep. me yep. and then right. she looked up to heaven and said Let's all stand up, turn around, and fellowship as the choir comes down.
Amen. What a joy, what a joy. Amen. Thankful for what the Lord's done, what he's doing, what he's going to do. Amen. While the ushers are coming this morning to receive our offering as we worship through our giving, I want to make mention of a couple of things. I want to read this card first. It says, thank you with sincere thanks and appreciation. It says, dear church family, thank you, thank you, thank you. We heard from the Lord all week. You all had a hand in the decisions made because of your wonderful gift. We will never forget this week. Thanks again, Mark and Patty and Timothy Finch, Morgan Finch, Megan Finch. Thank you so much. We love you. The Parnells, thank you so much. Hannah Finch, thank you. Eliza Brooks, thank you so much to everything for everything. Love to Robertson. And for my wife and myself, thank you so much for everything. This has been a great week. Amen. We appreciate the Lord and what the Lord did. Amen. And it was because of our church family that we were able to do that. If it hadn't been for y'all, we wouldn't have been able to go. And we're going to see a little bit of something about what happened this week in just a moment. And then the young people are going to sing for us this morning. And uh, so uh, we're looking forward to that. I already mentioned about the Bibles. If you can help out, see Brother Mike after the service. Also, put this on your calendar. Uh, I know things, times are moving fast, and sometimes we forget what's going on. So please put these dates on your calendar. September the 12th through the 15th, uh, we'll be having our revival. Brother Steve Wagers will be here starting Sunday morning, going through Wednesday night. The Joy Heirs will be here singing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. So that's September 12th through 15th. And then on October the 24th, as far as I know, that's going to be our uh, Pastor Appreciation Sunday. We'll be celebrating our 35th year. Wow, 35 years that we've been here. And uh, I appreciate every year, everything that God's done. And So be sure to put these on your calendar so uh, you can plan on being here, and especially the meeting uh, we need revival, amen, and we're praying we'll be in revival before revival ever starts, and uh, so let's just ask the Lord uh, to bless in all these needs, amen. All right, let's pray this morning. Brother Shed, how about praying and asking God to bless the offering? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for your goodness, Lord, and mercy, and Lord, thank you for watching over the teens and the, the families from our church as they went out, and and, Lord, just work on those hearts, Lord. Help those uh, commitments that were made to, to be held fast, Lord. And just help these, these young men and women, Lord. I know they're making decisions right now that will affect them for the rest of their life. Yeah. And, Lord, just help them to, to not be enticed by the broad way of this world. And, Lord, it, it, it looks enticing, but, Lord, it leads to death. Help them to stay on the narrow path, Lord, of, of your will. Lord, the, the path of a living God where they can receive your blessings and, and be in your will. Lord, it just... Pray now to watch over them, and uh, Lord, just help them to grow into children that will be pleasing to you. And Lord, uh, now I'd ask you to bless this offering, that we might use it for your honor and your glory. And all these things I ask in the name of Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Amen. We're going to show just a short little video, just give you an idea of some of the things that went on. There's no way that we could recap everything in, in an hour, but uh, just for a brief moment, uh, we want you to uh, just look at this video, and our, our young people, I was impressed by their desire uh, to want to be there. Of course, you know, when you think of Pigeon Forge, you think of vacation. 
we, were, we didn't go on vacation. We went to get help from heaven. And we're thankful for what God did. And uh, so Spring, Spring made this little video driving home while Tim, well, she wasn't driving home. Tim was driving. She was doing the video. And uh, so we appreciate that. I appreciate all of our, I want all of our chaperones, all our RISE staff, stand up this morning, if you will. All our RISE staff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the going, taking time out, and doing this, and being with our young people. And I tell you, it's just been good. I, I just thank the Lord. So we're going to let them go ahead and uh, show this video. Lord, we're looking forward to the services this week, and we're praying, that, Lord, our hearts are willing in every service, Lord, you speak to us, Lord, when you do speak to us. you would bind the powers of hell from this place. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over this entire facility. We ask you, God, that you'd have free right of way here. We pray for Holy Ghost conviction to settle on the hearts of all who are here. We pray, God, that the preaching would fall upon good to me the resume process listen he got back to doing what he was doing you got to realize if god does the work to make it available you've got to do the work to reach for it and once you reach for it you've got to take it nobody can stop you from getting back in the work of god nobody can stop you from praying again reading again serving again who decides whether you get up on sunday morning you decide whether you get up Thank you. 
deepest, darkest moments of our life, looking back, that God used the most to propel us into everything that God has for us. Sin's taken them a long way and abused their life. And they need somebody like you and I that's been to the cross and been to Calvary to invade their world and lift up our voice and say, Behold, hey, there is a balm in Gilead. There is a sympathizing Savior, the Lamb of God. He can take away your sin. He can take away the guilt and the fear and the condemnation. Aren't you glad the ground is level? At the foot of the cross. endured the cross he endured the pain because of the joy of getting you there with him the joy of giving you not only heaven at the end of your life but the more abundant life in this life jesus said in john chapter 10 and verse number 10 the thief cometh not before to steal and the kill and destroy but i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly We need praying people. We need to say, God, it's not her or him, but it's me. I need revival.
I was taught the scriptures before I could read them. I found them to be true, and that's why I believe them. With all of my heart, my soul, and my strength, with every song I sing, This world grows darker, my lamp will be burning, kindled with love for the one who is worthy. He gave his all, so I will give mine. I'll lay my life on the line. I choose to be a Christian. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke my chains, freed 
my soul for the first time I have told. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. my place and laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you Jesus for the blood of Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. From me, from the darkness into stronger than the wonder working power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. There is nothing stronger Love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have been oh, I will sing. 
have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me.
The song said, all my life, you have been faithful. And he has been faithful. As I was praying this week and thinking about the service this morning, I was, I was hoping God would just show up, praying God would just show up. He showed up every service there at Arise. I'm certainly thankful for the goodness of God. It is the goodness of God that leadeth to repentance, the Bible says. I want them to sing that song again in just a moment. I just want to share this, what's been on my heart this last few days. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There was a word that just God put on my heart this week, and that is the word breath. Here the Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That word inspiration means God breathed. That's exactly what it means. It is This book is a book that was inspired by the very breath of God upon the writers as they wrote. And without the breath of God, realize this morning, without the breath of God, there would be no world. Because with the breath of God, God spoke everything into existence. Amen? God spoke into existence this world with the breath of his mouth. Without the breath of God, there would be no word. For it is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture, God breathed. And without the breath of God, there would be no world, there would be no word. I want you to give me this just quickly. As we think about the breath of God, that's just kind of been on my mind all week long about the breath of God. Well, I'm thankful for every breath that we're able to take, aren't you? You know, sometimes we even take our very breath for granted because it's just something that we do. We I, Do y'all sit around going, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in? No, but we God gives us breath. Our breath and the breath of God. First of all, life comes from the breath of God. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7 said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, listen to this, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Without the breath of God, there would be no life because life comes from the breath of God. When God created Adam from the dust of the ground and Adam was just a form, he was just a figure uh, of a man that God had made with his very hands. The whole world he spoke into existence, but man, he took the time to form man after his own image in his own likeness. And man was there in this form, but man didn't have life until God breathed into his nostril. The breath of life, and man became a living soul. Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Life is comes from the breath of God. Your life, my life, is given by the very breath of God. It amazes me that a, a baby can live inside of his mother, uh, mother's womb for nine months without any air. No air. But as soon as he is born and she is born, God gives them that breath. Amen. Hallelujah. Life comes from the breath of God. 
May I say, secondly, living comes from the breath of God. You and I this morning, we are living because of the breath of God. Acts 17, 25 says, Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth life to all life and breath and all things. Without the breath of God, there would be no living, but the Bible said he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 28 of chapter 17 of the book of Acts says, For in him we live and move and have our being. The breath of God. Without the breath of God, there would be no life. Life comes from the breath of God. Living comes from the breath of God. May I say that the Lord's breath empowers us for service. John chapter number 20 and verse 22, I read this several times. And the Bible said there, and when he had said this, he breathed on them. <laughs> oh, God breathed on us. The Bible says he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. The breath of God empowers us for service. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 5, just before his ascension to heaven, Jesus said, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And of course, we know 10 days later, the breath of God came as a mighty rushing wind in the upper room. And all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost from that very moment. Can I say this morning that it is impossible for us to serve the Lord without the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, how we need the breath of God upon our lives, upon our churches, amen, upon our families. Oh, how we need for God to once again breathe upon us and empower us and fill us with the Holy Ghost, amen, that we can serve him. Kind of like the valley of dry bones that God told Ezekiel to preach to. In Ezekiel 37, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring upon, bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel said, so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered up them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came, amen, into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I'm saying this morning without the breath of God, there is no power for service. How that we need God to stir upon us our deadness and our dryness that we would pray oh God let's let the winds come let the breath of God flow let the breath of God move upon our lives upon our hearts thank God and let God fill our lives this morning with the breath from heaven amen life comes from the breath of God living comes from the breath of God and then we also see that the Lord's breath empowers us for service. And I say lastly, the last breath takes you to eternity. Yes. 
God gives us our first breath. And God's going to take your last breath. Job said this in Job chapter 12, verse number 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? You know why I'm still breathing? God lets me. You know why you're still breathing? God lets you. One of these days, I'm going to take my last breath. One of these days, you're going to take your last breath. And when you do, it's going to take you to eternity. Psalm 104, verse 29 says, Thou hidest thy face. They, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. They die and return to their dust. One day at the appointment, According to Hebrews 9, 27, as it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. There's an appointment that all of us have that we're going to take our last breath. I don't know when that is. You don't know when it is. Only God knows when it's going to happen. And one of these days, we'll take our last breath and we'll usher us into eternity. And on that day of your last breath, will you leave your earthly tabernacle and will you go to heaven on your last breath? Only way you're going to do that is to be saved, to be redeemed, to be washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Because if you're not saved, that appointment's coming whether you're saved or lost. One day our last breath is coming whether you're saved or lost. There's no telling how many people since we got up this morning to this very moment right now have gone out into eternity because they have breathed their final breath. And they're gone. It's a sad thing to stand beside somebody and watch them take their last breath. It's a sad thing to watch a soul leave this world. Nothing glamorous about it. Hollywood glamorizes it, but may I say to you this morning, nothing glamorous about it, especially if you're lost. There'll be no glamour if you die without Jesus. If you're not saved and that appointment comes, you will lift your eyes in hell, just like Jesus said that the rich man did. When he died, the Bible said, and in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torment. I'm saying this this morning. Oh, how we need the breath of God. Oh, how you need the breath of God. You say, preacher, how can I get saved? You can get saved being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, by the breath of God, which liveth and abideth forever. I want us to stand this morning. Oh, I like that song, The Goodness of God. Oh, I'm thankful God's been good to me. God's been so, so good to me. And you're here this morning, God's been so, so good to you. But this morning, your breath, thank God for every breath. There are a lot of people that are even having difficulty breathing. They, many wear oxygen because their breath is hard to get. But every breath comes from God. But one day there's going to be that final one. And this morning, are you sure you're saved? Are you sure that if you took your last breath today? My heart broke the other day when I heard about the young man getting killed on a dirt bike. He was probably out just having fun having the time of his life. I, I dare say he never thought that that'd be his last ride. But that was his last ride, Brother Chris. There's a lot of people got behind the wheel of their car, left home, excited. They took their last breath behind the wheel of a car. 
A lot of people took their last breath not even knowing they were taking their last breath in their sleep last night. But what's going to be important is where you're going when that last breath is taken. And if you're not saved, I encourage you. Come and give your heart to Jesus this morning. Church, time's running out. Time's running out. We're running out of time. Jesus is soon coming. Death is soon coming. It's all going to come in a hurry. And before, and what the problem is, it's going to happen when we don't even realize it. The Bible said in the days of Noah, they didn't know it until the flood came. They didn't know it until the flood came. They didn't realize it until the flood came and took them all away. Father, I pray right now, God, you'd speak to every heart in this building. Lord, we rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. We rejoice in the word of God, the very breath of God that has given us our Bible. The very breath of God that brings conviction upon heart. The very breath of God, oh Lord, that stirs and empowers the people of God for service. God, speak to hearts in this building. As these young people sing this morning, I pray the Holy Ghost will speak to our hearts. God, minister to hearts. Save that one that's lost, please, I pray, in Jesus' name. You mind the Lord this morning as they sing. For your mercy never you love fails you me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing, sing of the goodness of, of, the the goodness of God. night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life you have been
praise be to the Lord. Father, thank you this morning. I thank you for your goodness. Psalmist said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Lord, we're thankful, God, for your good, your goodness, your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, I pray that you continue, God, to build a fire in the hearts of your people. Lord, these young people and others in our church, God, that you would send revival. Oh, God, stir us, Lord. Let us not be dead and lethargic. but God, let us be filled with life because the life we have in Christ. God, may we be excited about being a Christian. Oh, may we be excited about the things of God. And Lord, I again want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I appreciate these young people. Boy, I tell you, they've been a blessing. I appreciate you being here this morning. And uh, I tell you, God certainly stirring our hearts this week and I want it to continue on, amen. I want it to get worse. I want it to just get bigger and bigger. And uh, again, we say thank you to everyone that helped us to be able to go next year. Next year, we're planning on going back next year. And we'd like for more to go with us next year. It'll be the same week. I think the dates are like the 18th or the through 18th through the 21st. 18th through the 21st, so if you can, make plans to go. Praise God, it was wonderful, wonderful. And we had a great time, and I know we, we did get to go to Dollywood for about four hours. And, and we got in, we got there in time to get on the trolley, get in the gate, get something to eat. They rode a couple of rides. Me and Debbie and, and Mark rode the train, and then we left. You say, why'd you leave? Our kids wanted to get back so they could get ready to get ready to go to choir practice. They went to choir practice. They had two-hour choir practice on Monday afternoon. They had an hour choir practice every other afternoon. They stood in the choir for two hours on Tuesday night singing for two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been good. I just rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. If none of this affects you, just leave us alone. Go on about your business, and we'll just enjoy the goodness of God. You can enjoy whatever you're enjoying. We're just going to enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. Be back tonight. Praise God. And we might show the, where's spring at? We might show that Arise recap tonight. Uh, we might show that Arise recap tonight. So come back tonight, it, and we'll be here tonight. Uh, preaching, uh, Lord willing, we're going to be back in the book of Daniel tonight. Come back, be with us this evening. So glad to see all of you here this morning. If you didn't do business with God and you need to, hey, you don't have to, listen, the, we don't open and close altars. As soon as that door's open, the altars are open. If you can get in this church, these altars are always ready. And you can get, get do business with God, get saved, rededicate your life, answer the call of God, and do business with Him, amen. While he's doing business with you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you so much for coming.